மறக்காம சர்பிரைஸ் பண்ணுங்க थैंक यू the queen and the bishop are also operating very well when creating opposite color bishop attack i like to show you one more sample besides the one that we have seen in the game anant against kramnik in this particular case rublevski against uh, zhang pengxiang everything started from the opening uh, it's the tournament uh, poykovski 2007 white has played in this situation the move queen c2 defending the pawn on e4 rather than the rook on a1 he is giving up the two rooks for the queen uh, the most experienced players are usually trying to avoid that uh, but rublevski correctly assesses that not only there are too many um the 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 files most of the files are closed but on the top of that his attack on the dark squares is going to be successful and he is going to be the one who is having the initiative black has nothing else but to accept the sacrifice which he did in the game because if he simply ignores it if he plays castling for example then bishop b2 um queen d8 and rook a3 will lead to attack completely for free for white he is lifting the rook on g3 and is attacking the pawn on g7 and after that he can further on attack the pawn on h7 therefore taking on a1 is more or less forced that what that was played in the game now bishop b2 is trapping the queen in the game he decided to take on f1 immediately as if queen a2 it would be the same rook is coming on a1 and after queen takes a1 bishop takes a1 castles and say for instance g4 we will have a very similar situation to the one that we are about to see in the game so queen takes f1 instead of that king takes f1 black castled and the very important move in this situation was the one g4 very strong one uh, the idea is to try and to prevent the blockade of the dark squares with f6 and uh, e5 even if f6 and e5 is played in this situation white will go for f4 and he would be still capable of opening the diagonal for the bishop but it is much better for him to have both the g and the f files open for his queen and the bishop so thus the move g4 the idea is to push even further the pawn to come f to f4 and after that uh, to force some weakenings of the dark squares Uh, now f6 was played if f5 instead of that then g5 is good and the bishop will be dominating in the center on e5 and also in this position if instead of f5 black tries e5 then e5 would be answered still g5 and after f6 we see precisely what we were talking about white is opening first the g file then he gives a check to improve the position of the queen and after that he goes f4 and is getting ready to open the diagonal in a good moment whenever this diagonal is open black would be in huge danger so therefore he's trying to play in a more restrained way um jean has played the move f6 and now h4 has been played uh, the other move is queen to c4 which is also not bad but h4 is part of the plan e5 queen b3 check takes away d6 square from the bishop for the time being and also the queen is ready to join uh, to switch to the king side with queen g3 or queen to f3 rook f7 was played and there is no principal principal difference if the king goes on h8 it will be pretty much the same thing after g5 bishop g4 gf6 gf6 the queen can come on e3 and after that f4 would be still prepared or the queen can also go on h6 before the f4 move is done so back to the game where rook f7 was played now g5 consistently opening the diagonal for the bishop bishop d7 gf6 gf6 and once again we opening the diagonal it's not necessary that we open it with f4 the main thing is to open that uh that diagonal and to try to reach the king at the end d4 is very strong and unfortunately for black he cannot keep the blockade with a move like rook e8 as after a d takes e5 f takes e5 not only the the move queen g3 is possible here but um 
bishop b5 is also possible but okay queen g3 is the strongest one and after rook g7 queen h2 the pressure against the pawn on e5 forces the black rooks to uh, to stay passive once that they are passive this pawn gets a chance to get further on it will come on h6 on the next move very close to the king um, that would be uh, really dangerous for the second player because any time later white is threatening to play a 4 to open that diagonal in a good moment in the moment in which he decides to first of all he can of course prepare something he can bring the king to c1 even uh, away from any danger and then in the decisive moment f4 would be played and that king on g8 would be suffering so d4 was answered instead of that uh, with ed4 Bishop takes d4, rook e8, f3, king g7, and now the queen is coming closer, queen to e3, d8 is queen g5 obviously, and to win the pawn for free, and once again to open up the dark squares, h6 was more or less the only move, it was forced, but whenever this move uh, is done we realize that the g6 pawn has been weakened and also the pawn on h6 itself has become a weakness and uh, instead of the move that Rublevsky played in the game queen f4 which was by the way also okay and at the end of the game he managed to to win it um, there was an even faster way for him to finish he could have played h5 Looking at the g6 square, the threat is queen g1 check, followed by queen g6 to get into the opponent's camp and to start grabbing the pawns and attacking the king. If rook g8 in that case, then queen f4 is very strong. Room bishop e6, e5, and the dark squares are opened in white's favor. Or if f5, then we are looking for the other weakness, the one on h6 with bishop e3. And after rook h8, check and queen g6. Black is helpless, there are too many threats. Um, the renowned double attack is still working for us very well. Well, after h5, if black decides, uh, decides to defend with the king coming on h7 to open up the g file for the rook, then we go still queen to f4, hitting the pawn on f6, and after the possible rook g8, we can even take it. We're not afraid of the pin because there is always e5 defense. When the game can continue with rook g5, queen g6, black is taking this pawn, but this pawn is not important for us at all. After um, after we consolidate the position next, white would be threatening simply to advance the pawn. And together with the combined attack against the king, this should be good enough for him to win the game. So the important thing whenever we have opposite colored bishops, no matter if we are having the rooks or we are having the queen, is who has the initiative and the one who has it is the one who is usually winning. And in brief, um, let's summarize the positions with queen versus two rooks. The side with the rooks is usually trying to go into an endgame and then to penetrate on the first or the second rank with the rooks to try to create mating threats, back rank mating threats and also to try to attack the pawns of uh, the opponent along these files or from behind. Um, in the middle game if we have the rooks also we would be looking for ways to open files and to give more work for them. While in, uh, in most of the cases the side with the queen is trying to, to give enough operative space for, for the queen to create double attacks. This is the most common tactical method that the queen is using and generally the queen is better in the middle game than the rooks. So this is what we uh, learned from this uh, part of the DVD. <laughs>
மறக்காம சர்பிரைஸ் பண்ணுங்க தேங்க்யூ